Hey, it's Chris. Now, I can see you guys thinking to yourself, why does Chris always talk about the iPad? Isn't there anything else to talk about? Well, here's the thing. I try to keep some creative and inspiring things around the office so I can feed off that creativity and inspiration, whether it's art or certain references I wanna keep top of mind or just fun things to look at. And the iPad itself is one of those creative and inspirational things. It just so happens to also be very useful and adaptable for my workflow. In fact, I love it so much, I created a dedicated iPad station away from my Mac off in a corner in my office, and it's one of my favorite places to work. So today we're gonna do a very quick basic review of iPadOS's multitasking features so you remember everything you have to work with because I feel like people tell me all the time like, oh yeah, I knew about this or that, but then I forgot about it and I never end up really using it. So let's make sure you have it down pat and then we're gonna get into a framework that I actually use to skyrocket my iPad and multitasking productivity. Now we're gonna start off by reviewing the iPad multitasking features. I'm gonna keep it moving really quickly, so feel free to just pause and rewind. I know you guys can do that if you want to, but if you feel like you know all this stuff already, psh, just skip on to the next section. All right, so if you wanna view two apps open side by side, drag an app out of the dock to the side of an app that's already open and drop it. This is called split view and it's basically the foundation of iPad multitasking. Grab that middle bar there between two apps to refine and adjust the space that each app takes up. Obviously, split view is good for just seeing more at any given time and also for dragging and dropping between apps. Alternatively, or in addition to split view, you can also see more than one app on the screen at once by dragging an app from the dock and dropping it either on top of a single app or onto that separating line dividing two apps. This is called slide over because you can slide apps off the screen to store them and then you can slide them back on over when needed. You can drop several apps into the slide over window for storage and you can swipe through them using that bottom bar or with a three finger swipe gesture on your trackpad. You can also swipe that bottom bar up to see all the apps and slide over at once or again, you can do a three finger swipe up on your trackpad to do the same thing. Slide over is great for keeping stuff you need on hand without having it clutter up your digital workspace. And we're gonna be really strategic about how we use it a little bit later in the video. Many apps let you have multiple instances or windows open at once. To create a new instance of an app, tap on its icon in the dock, tap show all windows, and then hit that plus icon in the top right of your screen. This is useful for obvious reasons. You can have two websites open in Safari side by side. You can have two notes from the same notes app open side by side, maybe one to reference and one to work within. And you can also mix and match multiple instances of apps to create workspaces or just what Apple calls spaces. Drag that bar at the bottom of your iPad screen up and then pause halfway to open up App Switcher in order to see all your open apps. And again, a three finger swipe up on the trackpad is going to do the same thing. With App Switcher open, swipe up on any app that you wanna close. Alternate methods for switching between open apps include swiping your finger right or left along that bottom bar on your screen, swiping three fingers right or left on your trackpad, and of course, something Mac users will be very familiar with, cycling through apps using Command plus Tab on a physical keyboard. Two other keyboard shortcuts you need to know about for multitasking include hitting Command plus H, which shows the home screen, and Command plus Spacebar, which brings up search. Keep in mind, when you search for an app, you can drag Drag it out of search and into split view or slide over so you don't necessarily have to keep every app you might need down in your dock. So that is the basic knowledge that you need to know about in order to use multiple apps on the iPad, which is great, it's foundational. But now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video, which is gonna be how to bring those techniques to bear in order to be more productive. First things first though, multitasking is kind of a confusing term. People use it in different ways. So in this video, when I refer to multitasking, I'm actually gonna be referring to trying to complete one task, a single task, while maybe potentially using multiple apps. So really more like multi-apping to try to do one single task. Why? 
Well, here's a quote for you. To do two things at once is to do neither. Who's Publilius Cirrus? No idea. Like the quote, found it online, use it in the video. But here's the thing. Multiple studies have shown that trying to accomplish more than one task at a time actually can end up really slowing you down, maybe as much as like 50%. So it's really not the best thing to do. The secret to multitasking is that it isn't actually multitasking. It's just extreme focus and organization. And I like that quote a lot. So the question really is, in my mind, how can we use the iPad's feature set in order to stay focused and organized? And I think I've come up with a pretty useful, easy to understand framework. It's what I basically use in my daily work. Basically, if an app is directly needed to complete the current task, then it's on my screen, in front of my eyes. Just my workhorse apps, that's what I wanna concentrate on when I'm accomplishing a task. If an app is indirectly needed to complete the current task, then I store it in slide over. Then if I need an app for the project I'm working on, but not for the task I'm working on, I keep that open in App Switcher. And then I close all other apps because those are basically distractions. So I'm fully concentrating on the apps in front of me, but then I can dip into some supporting apps using slide over if I need to without actually leaving the screen. So the workhorse apps still stay open. That's why slide over is so awesome if you're actually being strategic about how you use it. And then if I need to reference something that's related to the project or that just won't fit in a split view for whatever reason, I can just swipe back and forth really quickly between full screen apps using the multitasking functions. It's a dream come true. All right, so we've talked about this idea in abstract, but let's put it into action with a sample demo project. So let's say that I am going to make a script for a video on my favorite iPad screen protector, Paperlike, which as you guys know by now, makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like writing on real paper. All right, so my workhorse productivity apps for writing a video script might be Apple Notes and MindNode. So that's what's visible on my screen in front of my eyes. So we can do this together. Whatever task it is that you find yourself working on right now, you can replace my workhorse productivity apps with your workhorse productivity app or apps. Okay, so then in slide over, I'm gonna store the apps that are related to getting this task of script writing done, but they're not directly related. They're supportive, but I'm not actually writing the script with them. So things like Instapaper, where I do some research, Apple Music for some background music. I'll load up a task list maybe so I can stay on top of the tasks that I'm supposed to be doing. And very importantly, I'll throw in the Shortcuts app as well. The reason that I stash Shortcuts in SlideOver is because it's kind of like an on-demand command center that I can bring up without ever having to leave my main workhorse focus apps. So I like to keep some productivity shortcuts on deck there in a multitasking folder. And then I also keep some frequently accessed note shortcuts and file shortcuts, as well as some system shortcuts as well. I'm talking about system shortcuts like turning on do not disturb so that I'm not getting pinged with notifications all the time. Now I know a lot of people get super bogged down when it comes to shortcuts and they just feel like somebody's talking a different language when they're talking about shortcuts. It's actually really easy to go in and find some ready pre-made shortcuts. So just open up your shortcuts app, tap on the plus icon, and then tap on apps, and you'll see your favorite apps there. So browse around, find your favorite apps, and then check out the shortcuts that are already just waiting to be added and used for your favorite apps. So in this particular instance, for this video, we're talking about multitasking, look for stuff that you can activate that's gonna save you time or look for repetitive tasks that can be compressed and condensed because it takes some time now, but it's gonna save you time over and over again in the future. And then what I like to do is create a specific dedicated folder within Shortcuts. That's something you can do in a recent update and then stash all my productivity, multitasking, command center shortcuts in that folder. So they're all grouped together. So what about App Switcher? That's the last thing to talk about for this demo project. What am I gonna stash there? I actually don't need all that much. If you can get away without having anything else open, then maybe that's a good idea, but you could stick something like a project management or calendar app there just to reference, keep you on track in terms of a deadline. But at this point, this is when I would recommend closing YouTube, closing Twitter, all the things that are distracting, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, uh, games, anything that you would normally just leave open, get those closed, get them out of there. Because it's really easy to accidentally open App Switcher or open it on purpose, 
uh, and there's YouTube and you see a thumbnail and it draws you in and you start wasting time. So at this point, if you followed along here, then you've really streamlined your productivity workflow. You've gotten rid of distractions. You can now really, really focus. And then you use those multitasking tools that we kind of reviewed in the beginning of the video to access the information that you need to supplement your main workhorse apps and to actually get a lot of work done. Now there's a few other things that I like to do in order to stay on task, stay focused, and not have to dip into any other unnecessary apps while I'm working. The first thing is that I use Siri and voice commands as much as possible. So if I'm listening to some background music while I'm writing and I hear a song that I like and I wanna to add to my library, I don't go into the music app, I try to just tell Siri to add that to whatever playlist. Same thing with reminders. I'm reminding myself to do stuff all the time. It's basically my to-do list. I use reminders in the car, I use it on my watch, just everywhere. And so if something occurs to me, then I will just voice a reminder and not have to get into any other kind of app to create some kind of task and organize it in a folder. I don't do that. The other thing that I try to do is actually remember that Control Center exists and try to utilize it, make the most out of it. So Control Center, you can access by swiping down from the top right corner of your screen and it's pre-populated with some useful buttons and stuff. You can go into your settings and customize what appears there and you can actually stash some stuff there, which will save you from having to use a dedicated app or having an extra app open that you'll have to get into and that can take you away from your workhorse productivity apps. So for instance, this isn't me, but if you're really into using a Pomodoro timer, right, and working for a little bit and then having a break and working for a bit and having a break, you don't have to have a separate app just to do that. You can swipe down and right there in Control Center is a timer. If you long press on it, you can set a timer in just a snap. And you don't have to have any other app open in Slide Over or elsewhere to do that. The last thing that I think people could kind of holistically consider if you're trying to be really productive is to think about what's on your dock because that's the main place where you're gonna go to bring apps up to multitask. So I like to keep, and this is where if you're playing a drinking game in this video, it's gonna be my workhorse productivity apps, right? That's where I keep those main productivity apps in the dock and everything else I either keep on the home screen or maybe in a folder somewhere because when the workday is over, it's not like I can't go find a game or Netflix or Disney Plus and watch some Star Wars or do some relaxing, right? But just like I don't want App Switcher to be filled with a bunch of distractions, I also don't want my dock to be full of potential distractions either. It's kind of like digital minimalism or cleaning up your digital workspace because you're vacuuming up and sweeping up all the clutter that's all over your workspace and storing it and organizing it in these different places so that it's still accessible, but it's out of the way. I personally really like the idea of being more mindful about how I'm using the multitasking features that are built into iOS because I feel like I have everything at my fingertips, literally, that I need and everything that shouldn't be in sight is out of mind. So that works really well for me. Like I said, streamlined. Here's a little something that might pique your interest as we wrap this video up. Apple Hype is coming back and it's coming back very soon. We've been rethinking it. We've taken the time to say, what should this be? Uh, when it kind of took a break, I've had just somebody tweeting me, emailing, there's been comments like, when is Apple Hype coming back? It's coming back soon. We were just rethinking it. It was kind of an experiment when we got it going and it just turned out people really, really loved it. So applehype.com, you can monitor it. We're probably talking days or weeks at this point before it comes back. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's something that I would want to see and interact with every single day. And so I built it as something that I would want to use, which is, I think, why people liked it in the first place, uh, because it turned out to be very useful. So keep your eyes peeled. You can follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. I'd love to catch up with you guys there. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check out, if you're new around here, the most useful iPad tips video ever. That's a great place to dig into more Daily Tech content. I'll link it up down below. Later.